It's been a long time coming from the SC Sakalana, baby. Sometimes it feels like the world is against me. Cause I'm coming from SC. From heartache and pain, struggle and strain. Trying to maintain for the SC. So, mama, don't worry. Hey, I'ma make my dreams happen. Word definition of the day wattage. A measure of how much electricity the lamp consumes. Welcome, welcome back to the Nail Genie SC. How are you? I hope you are well and your family is doing well. Do me a favor, if it's your first time here, consider subscribing. And if you've been here with me for a while, hit that like button for me. It helps out the channel a lot. So now, let's get into today's video. So guys, in today's video, we are going to be starting a mini-series um, with doing um, simple. I'm not going to say easy um, because for some, it may not be easy. But I'm going to give you some simple ideals for nail art for the fall and Halloween season. Um, some designs can be uh, used for fall and some of the designs you can incorporate for your Halloween uh, sets but I am just going to share with you guys how um, when I'm creating a set or when I'm practicing um, what I want to practice or you know when I'm in the lab working and I want to practice on something that I may or may not incorporate into a design this is what I do and I wanted to share that with you guys so I thought hey I'll leave this in real time I'll show you guys exactly how I create and yeah so hopefully guys we are in frame um, there may be a few times where you think I'm not in frame but I'm actually going to come back into frame it's because I am right-handed when I hold things in my love hand and I'm going towards the light it seems as if I'm not going to be in frame, but I will come back in the frame. I have a marker on my desk to make sure that I do, I am in frame for you guys. And when I catch myself not in frame, I try to come back in very quickly. All right, guys, so what you're going to need for nail art, you're definitely going to need some good brushes. So today, in today's video, I'm going to be using my Nicole J brushes because I want to have um, thinner lines. Um, so with her brushes, her uh, brushes are very, very thin. Um, you don't have to worry about trimming these brushes. They come very thin, very nice to work with, light feather, and glides very nicely across the nail. For nail art, I have the striper, the mini striper, and the detailer. So I'm going to start off with the striper, um, and I am going in this brush cleaner it's a gel brush cleaner i love to use it you guys have seen it on my channel several times um i got it out of a um kit i can't remember what is that brand mm. Josh love it was out of a Josh love uh Josh love solid cream gel kit and i have been using this stuff forever because it's great for cleaning my brushes so here I got some white gel polish. I got two oranges and I have um, two different color oranges, of course, and a black. And these are all Mifa gels, I believe. I think so. Mifa gels that I have on my shelf. And I decided I'll grab these little bottles and to use them 
because of course I like to use these smaller bottles for nail art. So here I'm going in with some lines and I'm creating the infamous spider web. So guys, you have seen this design all over the internet and I'm going to try to show you how to do it or talk you through how to do it as well as show you. So you want to find a point on your nail and I'm using a stiletto nail. So I'm finding a point at the top of the nail. Now you could choose your point anywhere you want to on your nail. You can do a, you could choose the point to be in the center and do a spider web all over the nail. You can do it in a French design. You can do it at the corner. You can do it at the side. You can do it wherever you choose to do it. But you want to find a spot in your nail. Now, once you find that spot, you want to start creating your lines from that one spot you found. So here you're going to go in and you're going to make your lines like, like a half triangle. Not a full triangle, but like a half triangle. And you want to do as many lines as you feel comfortable doing. But I usually do about four, four or five lines. And so I'm going to do those lines. And you definitely want to make sure that when you are creating line work, you want to make sure you have a, a good lamp close by. Because you want to freeze your nail art for at least 10 seconds to freeze those lines in place. Once you're comfortable with what you, you have designed, right? If your lines are not straight, you can always wipe and start over. So when I started this, when y'all see me start this series, I'm going to always have the base already on the nails. Because I don't want to waste time with the base because it's not about the base. It's about the nail art. So, but here I'm going to tell you, I already had used the base. The base was black and it's matted out. I like to use a matte surface most of the time. Now, I have used a base gel surface on the nail for some nail art. But I really like to use the matte surface on the nail because it's going to help me be able to glide my brushes with the gel paints or gel polishes or gel uh, whatever I'm using to do nail art with. It's going to help it glide across the nail better. Plus, if you have a no wipe top surface or a matte top surface and you make a mistake, you can wipe it off and not mess up your um, gel paint or your gel polish. So, you want to keep that in mind. Now, I use alcohol. I don't use acetone. But you, a lot of artists may use acetone and that's why you want to have that protective layer. So, if you use an acetone, it's not eating away at the gel paint okay so now i'm going in and i'm starting to create the web because once you've created your lines and you got your lines how you want them now you want to start and start at the top and start creating your web and you're going to go all the way down and what i've found to be very nice easy and tidy is creating all the webs the same on the same row if that makes sense so i if you go back to some of my uh, art from last year, my webs were uh, spaced. So on one triangle, I may have four webs. And then on the second triangle, I may have three webs because I had them going um, between the, the webs going between each other, if that makes sense to you. But I realized that it makes it look even more together. If I create it this way, but you can create it either way you feel comfortable because a spider web is not always perfect, right? It's a web that the spider um, creates um, to trap his prey. So um, it don't have to be perfect. Um, nothing ever have to be perfect, guys. You just have to give yourself a try. And we're in, none of us will ever be perfect in anything we do. But we'll get better as time go by and the more we do it. So as I was doing this, I said, well, I want to add a little bit of acrylic. Because, you know, fall is here. Sweater nails are in. And I'm going to be trying this, you know, sweater nail pattern soon. And I want to use the acrylic. So I was like, hmm, I have this clear acrylic right here. So let me just throw it over the web. Now, when you're throwing over any type of powder, whether it be pigment powder, acrylic powder, color, whatever, you want to make sure that the 
gel is still wet. So do not pop that in the light until everything, the powder is on the nail. And then once the powder is on the nail, go ahead and stick it in the light. Cure it for 60 seconds. And then when it come out the light, that's when you dust off the acrylic, excess acrylic powder. Okay? Remember that, guys, because I know when I first did a sweater nail, I never did it before. I screwed it up royally. I end up taking my drill, taking my stuff, going to my client's house, and fixing it. Because I just could not live with it looking that way. I knew what I had did wrong. And I just needed to correct it. Of course, she was shocked to see me. But she was ecstatic to see that I had drove all the way to her home just to fix her nails. So... But that's, you know, you do that sometimes when it's your work, you know, and you get, you learn from your mistakes not to do them again. That way you don't have to, you know, do, do what I did. So here, guys, I'm taking both those oranges and I'm going to mix them. One is a brighter orange. The other one is a more orangey orange. But I want to create a pumpkin and I didn't want it to be either one either one one of those I wanted to be mixed so that's why I'm mixing the two oranges but guys that's the um thing with uh learning your color wheel or buying a color wheel card on Amazon or even um pulling up the color wheel on Google that way you know what colors go with each other what colors will do if you mix this color It'll make this color. If you bring these two colors together, it'll do this for this color. And I had to learn that over time. I still am learning that now. So it's not something that, you know, it just come naturally. It only come naturally to artists, real artists, right? People who have take took art in college, um, that's what they do. Uh, that's their gift. That's their niche. That's what they, they create, paintings but for someone like me and i'm sure a, a few uh ladies in this community we still have to think about our color wheel our color scheme what colors go together right come easy to some not so easy to others all right so here guys i'm creating the infamous pumpkin now i'm gonna tell you i think pumpkin designs are better on um Coffin nails, square nails, tapered square nails, or an oval nail. But a stiletto nail at the bottom of the pointy, not so much so, only because you don't have enough canvas to work with, right? But I still made it work anyway. So when you don't have enough canvas, but you still want that pumpkin nail, I hope you guys pay attention to what I'm doing and I'll be able to show you how to at least still get the effect. So now I'm going in and I'm creating this little mm, dangly, uh, what is it? Like the little dangly web, loose web that the spider hangs from, right? As he twirling down to the floor or wherever he trying to get to, he brings that web down. He's still connected to that web, right? So I'm creating that illusion here. And I'm going to add a little spider onto that web. Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm wrong, going wrong. Well, where I went wrong. And I hope you guys don't do the same as I did. But I was sitting in here creating. And in my mind, I'm thinking it looks great. Because in person, it looks fabulous. But I'm going to pause that and let's get back to this pumpkin. Okay? <laughs> so with the pumpkin, you want to do like, it's almost like a heart shape but half heart shape. So you want half of the pumpkin to be a little bit raised, going into like a heart shape, and then you want the other side to be a little lower so you can be able to, con you know, create that pumpkin, the top of the pumpkin. Because, you know, pumpkins have that little bit of, mm, like it, it comes in, look like a heart, but it's not shaped like a heart because the bottom of a pumpkin is actually rounded and it goes up a little bit, right? 
Um, so you want to create the illusion of the top of the pumpkin because you're not creating the whole entire pumpkin, right? So I'm going in, I added a second coat of painting gel and I'm going to pop that nail in the light for 60 seconds. Now I'm going to go back to the spiderweb nail and I'm going to take this black gel polish and that's where I went wrong yet, guys, because I'm putting black gel polish on black. So you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. All right? So I'm going to talk you through it, okay? Now, in person, this looks fabulous. But in this camera lighting and on this camera, you can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to talk you through it. So when creating the body of the spider, I use a dotting tool. Dotting tools are great for creating circles and things that you need, like a little round or oval shape. So here I'm just taking the dotting tool and I'm making the body of the spider. So I want the body to be bigger than the head. So I'm just going round and round till I get it to my liking. And you always get things to your liking because you want it to look that way. It's not going to be exactly because, I mean, a spider... Yeah, I'm drawing daddy. I'm I'm going to draw me a granddaddy long leg, the nice spider. <laughs> Not a tarantula, okay? <laughs> so, here I'm going in. After I've cured the dot, I like the dot. I'm going to go in now, and I am going to go back to my pumpkin nail. And I'm not sure, guys, if you're going to see what I'm getting ready to do. But, uh... I will have to do it again because when I noticed I wasn't in frame, I was like, wait, I'm not in frame. So here I'm taking, I'm out taking the outline of the pumpkin and I'm taking the line from one side of the pumpkin and I'm going all the way in because I want to give that, uh, you know, I want to give that uh, bowing line. I'm going to say bowing line. And then I'm going to go from the other side and I'm going to do it the same again. And now I'm going to have two lines that are connecting but giving you this bow look, right? And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to take another line and I'm going to go between that line. And then I'm going to go on the other side and go in between that line and create another kind of like moon shape line. And then I'm going to go in the center and just create one line. And that way I'm going to have my pumpkin. Now, if you if you make a mistake, you can always take your alcohol and clean it up. Okay? But if you don't make a mistake and you like how it looks, now you want to freeze it. But of course I want to raise the pumpkin. So I'm putting on this acrylic powder. Right? I just want to raise it just a little bit. I don't want it to be like 3D or nothing. I just want to raise it a little bit. Give it that kind of velvet effect type thing. Because that's what acrylic and powder does. It gives the velvet effect. Right? It gives it a velvet effect look. So that's what I want to do. I want to give that pumpkin a velvet effect. So now I'm going to take... Now that my little spider web is out of the light and I'm getting ready now to draw my spider... I'm going now and drawing the head of the spider. So now that the body is complete, I just want one small dot. And I don't want it to be too small, but I want it to be medium where the body is big and I can still see the head. And if I wanted to put two little small dot eyes, I could. That's how big I want that head to be, right? So now I'm going to pop that in the light for that 10 seconds. Now I'm going to grab this other one because whenever you're doing nail art, you want to keep moving because you're going to have a lot of times where your um, nail art is in the light, right? So you just keep moving. If you're doing a, a, a design on all five nails, then keep moving from nail to nail to nail to nail. Figure out what you want to do, figure out your design, and just keep moving. That way, if you're doing it on a client, they know that you're staying busy. You know, idle, hands Everybody get bored. Now I'm getting upset. Now I don't want to come back because you just wasting time. You could have did this. You could have did that. And see, when I'm doing nail art on a client, I'm working between two hands instead of just one. So stay busy. That's the key. All right. So now I'm going in with this young nail brush. And this young nail brush, um, I like to keep it on the side just in case I need to do some painting or inside the lines. This is a good brush for, 
you know, creating that painting on the inside of the line. So I'm going to go, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. Why well, I have this, okay, I know what I'm doing now. <laughs> I'm sorry. So now I'm going and I'm going to create the stem on the pumpkin. And I'm creating the stem in black, of course. It's like, Jeannie, why are you using black on black? But for me, because it's a matte background, the shiny black look is so cute. Looked it so nice on it. In person, it looked nice. You could see it. But on camera, you like, okay, why is she creating it in black? Because I can't really see what she's doing. But I'm just creating the pumpkin stem. And the stem is not straight up, guys. It kind of go at like a little, mm, like a little, mm, about like the lines. Kind of like at a crescent moon type shape with a little stump. So you want to create that stem on the pumpkin, and then you pop it in the light. When you like your stem, you pop it in the light. It don't take a lot. It's just, you know, quick little boom, 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 and give it a little bit of like a little square top, and you got your cute little stem. Okay, so now I'm going in with the spider legs. Now, your spider can have as many legs as you want it to have. Nobody tell you how your spider should... Look, if you want your spider to have ten legs, you can have five legs on one side, five on the other. That's your business. But for me, I'm just creating the legs to my liking. So when you're creating the legs, you want to start at the where the body and the head connects. And then you want to go out from there. So you want to make sure the, the legs that's... The legs that's on the outer side is the farthest out. And the legs that's in the inner is in. And then you want to also make sure you have the same amount of legs on both sides. So for this small canvas, I think I put three legs on the body on each side. And then two legs on the bottom of where the head is at. Maybe one. I can't remember. But you want to make sure it's even. You want to make sure your legs look good. You want to make sure your legs are even. You want to make sure they are all coming out. So if someone is looking at your art, they can see and recognize that, oh, this is a spider, right? So it's just giving the illusion. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be just like, a, you know, the spider that you see crawling around. It's going to be your spider you created on nail art, okay? So keep that in mind. Don't overthink it. So now I'm going to go in, I'm going to flash cure that, and now I'm going to come back to my pumpkin. And now I'm taking this black gel paint, and I'm going to do this little twirl. And you know that the pumpkins always have this little twirl fig that comes out, like the greenery that comes out. I'm creating it in black, of course, but I'm going to do that little twirl effect because I think it's so cute. So I did that as well, and then my pumpkin is going to be complete. I'm done with it. Right, I'm not gonna go over this, uh, these nails with no kind of top coat or anything because, of course, as you know, guys, I use the acrylic powder, so I don't want to mess that up, giving it a velvet effect. I already put the matte top coat on, it gave it that effect. Now, for those lines like um, the stem and the little twirly and the uh, snake, uh, the snake, the spider. You can take your own top coat and put it on the palette, use your liner brushes, and just go in those areas. That way, those areas are sealed and, you know, you have that finishing, finish gel over top of that nail art. But because this is just um, a display for me, to put on my wall, I didn't do any of that. So I just created the nail art um, and left it like it is and hung it up. And that way my clients, and I already have a client who's going to get this design. Um, just a little bit, some variables, but they want this design. So nail art is a great tool, especially if you are a... Um, a person who take clients or have people coming into your space and you do their nails having displays of different things that you can do or things that you've done um, where it's visible to them seeing that it helps you that's an upcharge as well 
um, but it also shows them how creative how creative their nail tech is, right? So, like when I first started doing nails, my clients didn't know what my potential was. Now that when they look around my nail room and they see my hands that are displayed with nail art, they see my wall is displayed with nail art because I have a nail art wall, um, and they see all, and then they ha I have plenty of books to show them different things of nail art. And y'all know I do press-ons. Um, so I have that book that a lot of my clients get ideals for their sets out of those books. Um, so they know that I'm, uh, I, I draw. They know that I like to, you know, do a couple of designs here and there and, you know, come up with my own stuff. They know this. So now that they know this, they come in and they happy about their service because they know that when they leave, it's going to be a different kind of something, right? So just get into practice, guys. It's all in practice. You don't have to always record everything. If you're a person that never drew nothing in your whole entire life and you like, oh my God, I can't draw at all. I can't do this. I can't. Start practicing. Stop saying what you can't do and just pick up your line of brushes, pick up a swatch stick, give yourself a base, and get to drawing. Create the most simplest thing that you can think of in your mind. If it's just practicing your S's and your C's and a circle and a figure eight, just do that. You will never know what possibilities just doing that will open up for you but give it a shot you will never know what you can do until you try all right guys so i am going to go ahead and create some more spider webs on this third nail uh, we've already talked about how to create those i want to thank you all for the support to my channel i truly appreciate you all very much if you are here and have not subscribed to the channel and you like the content that you saw today and you want to see more of it go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified every time i upload a new video and videos like these and more i would love to have you a part of my youtube family as well as my youtube journey guys we are on the road to 1k we will get there one subscriber at a time. I appreciate every last one of you. I thank you so very much. I thank you to all my new subscribers. I thank you to the ones that's been rocking with me from day one. I just appreciate all of the love you guys give me in the comments. I appreciate, you know, you all interacting and engaging with me when I ask questions. You all answer the questions. I really, really do appreciate my subscribers, my viewers. Um, I, I just appreciate this community in, in its entirety. Um, without you, you ladies, you gentlemen, I couldn't do what I do. And it would not be fun to do it if I didn't have you guys doing it with me. So I hope you found something that I could have helped you with today that you'll be able to use in your upcoming content or in your upcoming sets. And guys, tomorrow we'll be doing another, oh, we'll be doing patches. So I know you guys have seen patchwork before um, all over the internet. That's another fall-inspired design. Um, I'm going to be showing you how we can create patch art on a nail and give it a cute little design and that be all that you do. So if you want to see that, stick around tomorrow. Make sure you got your bell, uh, your notification bell turned on so you'll know when I upload that video. And we'll discuss the patchwork. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys enjoy the remainder of this week's video and next week's video. I'm going to try to keep everything in real time. Um, but guys, these are the final look. Of the three nails we did we have spider we have the spider web we have the pumpkin and the pumpkin could have been a little bit bigger but with these kind of designs on a canvas like this if you a person who love rhinestones and gems and charms 
this is the canvas and when you can use all of those pretty things and put on a nail you can put a spider charm you can do whatever you want to do but you have that canvas to do it with so i just wanted to share with you guys some creative ways you can do this halloween season if you are new to uh, nail art you don't have to be left behind you could do this on your nails and still have you a cute design for halloween all right guys all right thank you all for watching please don't forget to comment like share and subscribe follow me over on all of my socials at the nail genie sc and you already know what time it is poof the nail genie she's out